Hey Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and I've got a bunch of cast iron cookware here that needs repair, needs restoration, and needs some seasoning. And we're going to walk you through how to do just that. Welcome to the show and let me introduce you to the cast iron. This is my modern day lodge uh, Dutch oven and it is grimy and full of old oil and soot and ash and needs to be cleaned badly. But other than that, it's doing pretty good. So I'm going to use this to demonstrate how to clean cast iron. This is another piece of modern lodge cookware. It's a griddle and it's been used and abused. The seasoning's all gone and it's covered in rust and it has a lot of damage, but no pitting and nothing too serious. I'm going to use this to demonstrate knocking off some loose rust and re-seasoning. This skillet was made by Lodge a few years ago and it has been used and abused. It's doing okay on the inside, just needs some re-seasoning, but on the back it's got some pretty heavy duty rust damage. So I'm going to remove the rust and then re-season the whole thing. This is an unmarked Wagner skillet. It's a 10.5 inch skillet from probably around the 1950s and it is in some bad shape. It is covered completely in rust with absolutely no seasoning. I'm able to tell it's a Wagner because of the font and the lettering. It says 10 and a half inch skillet and then it has the size number on it and it's got the size on the top of the handle. Uh, additionally, I can tell it's post 1950s because it's got a smooth bottom uh, but it doesn't say made in the USA on it. This is a very old pot. It's got a gate mark, which is a mark left over from the manufacturing process, which puts it probably in the 1800s sometime. And it is in really rough shape. It has got lots of heavy pitting, heavy rust. And the inside of it, it has an enamel lining that's very damaged. And it has about an eighth inch uh, deep pits all throughout the bottom. So this thing is in serious trouble. I really don't know if I can save this one, but we're gonna try. All right guys, time to get the rust off this cast iron. And to do that, I'm gonna use three different methods. The first method I'm gonna use is electrolysis. The second method is a vinegar bath. And thirdly, I'm gonna use Coca-Cola. This is my first time using the Coca-Cola method, so I'm gonna get a chance to compare it against the vinegar method. To make an electrolysis bath, all you're gonna need is a plastic bin full of water, and then you're gonna to wanna to add a fair amount of baking soda. In this amount of water, I'm putting about an eighth of a cup of baking soda. Mix it up really good, and then get yourself a piece of metal you don't mind ruining. In this example, I've got uh, a piece of old rebar. Then I'm gonna take my old pot, and I'm gonna sink it down in here, and I've got it hanging, suspended in the water. I don't want it resting on the bottom, and I've got it tied with a piece of metal coat hanger in this example. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a battery charger to this and I'm going to put the positive on the sacrificial anode that you want to ruin and I'm going to put the negative on the pot that I want the rust to come off of. The more amps you run through this the more aggressively it's going to to work. You can tell things are starting to work when you'll see bubbles and fizzing. The closer you place the sacrificial anode to the base metal, the stronger the reaction. And so you can effectuate which part you wanna focus on based on where you put the anode. Put the anode here, this part's gonna clean the fastest. Now for this skillet, I'm gonna use vinegar to get the rust off. I'm just gonna put it in this plastic bin here, and I've got a gallon of white distilled vinegar that's 5% acidity. So it was $3 at the grocery store. And uh, we're just gonna pour it on. All right, we're gonna let that soak for about an hour, then we're gonna scrub it and then soak it again and scrub it and soak it until it's clean. Next, we're gonna clean these two pieces of cast iron using original Coca-Cola. I've never done this before, so I'm just gonna kinda do it like I would vinegar and see how it comes out. Woo! Of these three methods, hands down my favorite for this type of work is the vinegar bath. The electrolysis works, but it's really fidgety. You have all this stuff you need to set up, you need uh, this uh, charger, and you need to constantly move the anode around to get it evenly across all the surfaces. The vinegar, you just dump it in a bucket of vinegar and it seems to work fine. 
The Coca-Cola works, but not as well as the vinegar, and it's more expensive. There's a lot of products and chemicals out on the market they will get rid of rust really well and even better than vinegar. However, I don't know if I want to be putting those chemicals on my cookware and letting it soak for hours at a time. The, the vinegar, the Coca-Cola, the electrolysis, all it does is loosen the rust. It doesn't actually get it off. You still have to use some elbow grease to do that. You can use a scouring pad, a chore boy, a wire brush, a drill, an angle grinder, whatever helps you can use it. I've got this little wire adapter at the end of a drill. I'm gonna use it to try to get the remainder of this rust off. And if I can't do it, I'll put it back in the vinegar and soak it some more. Well, you can see what a difference that's already making, getting down to bare cast iron. All right, well, the cast iron skillet's been sitting in the vinegar for another hour and uh, we're gonna see if the more stubborn spots have loosened up. Let's rinse it off in some vinegar and make sure we got everything. This 10 and a half inch skillet is looking really good. Just a few places to touch up and it'll be done. So rinse it off in the vinegar and as you can see, it's just all nice and shiny. So uh, we are all ready to season this thing. You can see here some of the black spots where the uh, electrolysis has already started to work. The rust is really coming off right there. Now restoring this pot is gonna be a special kind of challenge. It's got this broken enamel lining on the inside and I cannot fix it. There's really nothing I can do about that. So the best thing to do is try to remove the enamel lining. Uh, probably the best way to get rid of the enamel lining would be a, 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 a using glass beads in a sandblaster. Uh, I do not have that equipment. So instead I'm gonna use this, uh, this stripper here on a power drill. And hopefully I can take off the enamel. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna upgrade to an angle grinder and see how that does. I'm gonna be doing this forever at this speed. I'm gonna try out the angle grinder and see how well that handles it. Well guys, I did something stupid. I was grinding and grinding and grinding away at this enamel and I was an hour into it. And you can see how little progress I've made. So I thought maybe I could speed this up if I just gently tap it with a ball peen hammer. I can just chip away the enamel and break it off and that would speed up the process and I was being extremely gentle and look at this right there just busted a hole right in the cast iron it cracked all over uh, this pot was from the 1800s and I just broke it learn from my mistakes first off don't try to buy antique pots with damaged enamel linings they are a pain in the butt Second of all, don't try to knock the enamel off with a hammer. <laughs> so this is the one that was soaking in the Coca-Cola. Let's get the rust off here. There's some serious rust on this. This one was really easy. It only took one soak in the Coca-Cola and five minutes or so with the angle grinder and the brush to get it all completely done. It wasn't too bad. Well, this griddle is pretty well off, so I'm really expecting to do everything quite quickly with just the electric drill. Well, that looks pretty good. Got the rust off the griddle very easily. And uh, now one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth the surface a little bit. Now, this is a modern day Lodge cast iron griddle. Lodge deliberately makes their surfaces slightly textured so that it can pre-season them, that they can and season them quickly and cheaply at the factory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little, little thing right here 
and I'm gonna go and hit the surface and just take some of that texture off and that'll smooth it out. Well, this is a whole lot smoother and there's still a few pits in here and grooves. So there's places for the oil to, to bake on in, but it'll take fewer layers of seasoning for this to become really excellent nonstick. Once you remove all the rust, the exposed iron is really susceptible to rusting and corrosion. Um, and it can happen in a matter of hours. So ideally you want to season your cast iron immediately after removing the rust. That's not realistic for me today. I ran out of time and it's gonna be a couple days before I pick this project up again. So I'm gonna leave all this cast iron sitting in this vinegar submerged and I'll pick it up again in a couple days and it'll have no corrosion on it. Look at that, just a couple days ago it was solid rust. Now it's bare cast iron. Now we need to clean off the cast iron and get all that dirt and grime and metal shavings off the cast iron. Now we're gonna do this using soap and water. Now I know some of you out there are thinking, oh no, you never, never use soap and water to clean cast iron. That's not true. You don't use soap and water to clean seasoned cast iron. So at this point, we wanna get it as clean as possible. Soap is the appropriate thing to do. Once it's seasoned, don't use soap. And you wanna get the water as hot as possible here. If you wanna know if you did a good job, take a white paper towel, Clean it down. If the towel comes back relatively clean looking, you did a good job. And the towel comes back black, you know you still have some scrubbing to do. Once you've got it nice and clean, towel dry the cast iron and put it in the oven. We're just gonna put it in the oven long enough to make sure it's bone dry. Gotta admit, that's an impressive transformation. That thing looks good. If you have a piece of cast iron that's only lightly rusted, you can get rid of the rust simply with soap, water, and a bit of elbow grease. All of the electric drills and angle grinders and vinegar isn't necessary for things that just got a little bit of fairly new rust on. All right, that is bone dry. So I've got the cast iron clean, I've got it scrubbed, washed, bone dry, and a little bit warm. Now it's time to apply the oil to begin seasoning it. Now I'm gonna use organic flaxseed oil with no preservatives in it. This is just some of the best stuff you can use to season cast iron. But you can also use vegetable shortening that you've melted down. You can use uh, canola oil. Some people use coconut oil. There's a lot of different things you can use for seasoning. One of the most popular ways to season cast iron is to take shortening and wipe it onto a hot piece of cast iron. It melts right in and after you've covered every square inch of it with shortening, then you take a clean towel and you wipe off all the excess. Put the cast iron in an oven at 400 degrees for about an hour and then repeat the process two to four times to build up a layer of seasoning. Now this will get the cast iron darker than flaxseed oil, but I prefer flaxseed oil because it's stronger. So let me show you how to season it with flaxseed oil. Coat the warm cast iron in flaxseed oil just like you would shortening and wipe off the excess with a clean towel. Now we're going to put it upside down so the oil can drip off. All right, we're going to bake it in there for one hour at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. No matter what type of oil you're using to season your cast iron, make sure you don't put too much on it. After you apply the oil, wipe off the excess with a dry clean towel. When you first put the oiled cast iron in the oven, it puts off a fair amount of smoke, especially when you do three items at once. So I've got the fan blowing smoke out and I've got the, uh, the fan hood going full throttle. It was still a little smoke in here, but after about 15 minutes, it cleared up pretty good. So heads up. Don't do it when your wife's at home. So you notice how the seasoning on this old skillet is kind of splotchy, but the modern day lodge skillet, it's not. That's because of how these skillets are designed. Modern skillets are kind of bumpy so that they can be pre-seasoned very quickly at the factory. It takes a lot less time and energy to pre-season a slightly bumpy surface. The old skillets are smooth. 
Time for layer number two. Once again, we're doing it for 400 degrees for one hour. All right. So there we go, we've got two layers. It's looking a little darker. So there's the skillet, it's only the second layer. And it should be very smooth to the touch. It shouldn't be sticky at all. If your pan is sticky, that means you haven't cooked it long enough or you've added too much oil or both. Here's the, uh, the lodge pan. You can see it's coming along very nice. You can see what the griddle looks like after three layers of seasoning. It's hard, it's not sticky at all, it doesn't have a greasy feel to it. So you can see what the skillet looks like after three layers. Pretty darn good, but still it's more brown than black. So you can see the modern large skillet is looking really dark. It grabs that seasoning better than the smoother older skillets, but it's bumpier. It's not quite as smooth. So uh, here I am on my last layer of seasoning and the pots and, and skillets aren't quite black yet. So I'm putting them in for a number of hours until they just turn black. And this is just a way of finishing up the seasoning and making sure that thick layer of seasoning is cooked all the way through. Yeah, check that out. I didn't add any more oil to it, but just a little bit more time in the oven and it turned perfectly shiny black. That is gorgeous. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting here. So I'm gonna demonstrate two common mistakes and then show you how to fix them. The first is doing too many layers. Uh, two to four layers is fine. Six to seven layers isn't necessarily better. Additionally, adding more oil on each layer isn't better. So here I am, I'm just slopping the oil on as much as I can get on here. And I'm gonna cook it in for a total of six layers on all the cast iron here and I'm going to show you what it does and how to identify it and how to fix it. If your layers of seasoning come out bumpy and uneven, this is a sign that you're using too much oil and you're not wiping off the excess. When you turn it upside down, the drips of oil are hardening. You'll see them along the edge of the skillet especially and they'll break off and expose cast iron and cause weaknesses in your seasoning. If you add too many layers of seasoning, you'll start to get this bumpy surface that isn't as non-stick as it should be. You can remove these bumps and blisters through sanding. Removing the bumps in your seasoning doesn't take a lot of effort, so you can sand by hand very easily or use a random orbital sander. Use 800 to 1000 grit sandpaper and just make a few passes until it's smooth to the touch. All right, just rinse it off and scrub it without using any soap and that'll be ready to cook. Now the fun part guys, I'm gonna show you how to cook with cast iron. All right, we're gonna put this on a medium heat for about five minutes. We're gonna let that pan absorb all that heat. That's the beauty of cast iron, is that it absorbs a lot of heat and distributes it very evenly. Try a bit of oil in there. With non-cast iron pans, you are constantly moving the food around. With cast iron, don't do that. Stick the meat down and let it sit there until the surface caramelizes. Then it'll release and unstick and you can move it. See that it's caramelized? Just releases. Once you sear the outside of the steak, turn the heat way down to low, and then we're gonna slow cook it. I'm going to put some of this Montreal steak seasoning on there. I like my steaks to be medium rare, but if you like to cook yours a little bit more thoroughly, one of the nice things about cast iron is you can take it and just put it right in the oven, and that helps cook the steaks nice and even after you've caramelized the outside and seared in those juices. Beautiful steaks, beautiful. Now we're going to cook the vegetables. Little olive oil, just a dash. And I'm gonna roll this asparagus around so it's getting the beef juice and the olive oil all mixed up. You want all the asparagus coated. Sprinkle them with some garlic salt. Make sure you don't overcook the asparagus. It should bend, but it should still be able to snap. 
If it's floppy, you've overdid it. All I'm gonna do is just blacken the pepper a little bit and sprinkle a little bit of salt on them. All right, there you go. You can see you got a little bit of black on the pepper. They're good to go. You don't wanna overdo them. Daddy, I have milk. You want milk? Your friends are hungry. Go on. All right, got my dirty cast iron skillet here from lunch, and all I'm gonna do is just wash it in warm water and scrub it with a scrub brush. Don't overthink it and don't use soap. The trickiest part about cleaning a cast iron skillet is it's hard to see if there's any uh, gunk or residue stuck to it because it's a black you know, cast iron. So just use your fingers really quick. Make sure you don't feel anything stuck to it. You're good to go. Then dry it off really good with a towel. All right there, nice and clean, dried. Didn't take too long. You don't want to use metal tools like spatulas and tongs and forks. Uh, too aggressively when using cast iron. They can scrape off the seasoning. And that's what you see here, these scratch marks from a pair of metal tongs. It's time to clean this pot. And you can see here, it's got tons of grease and soot and all sorts of nasty stuff in there. And uh, even this, this is old oil. I think I was making some campfire donuts and I didn't clean this thing out. Heating up the cast iron can make cleaning it a little bit easier. You know, I still want to be able to handle it, but I want to make it pretty hot to the touch. Water is good for removing soot and burnt up food, but if you're trying to get grease off, often a dry paper towel does better than a scrub brush and water. Well, there we go, it's all clean. All anyway, right, that's how you restore, season, cook with, and clean cast iron. So, not the only way to do it, but it's how I do it, and hopefully it'll get you started and you learn something new. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more great videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more great videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you'll get notified when we put out another great video.